If you're hearing this in your Rolls Royce, then Donald Trump's tax plan is for you. I'm rich as hell. We're gonna give you a tax cut? But for everyone else, there's Kamala Harris's plan. Under my plan, more than 100 million Americans will get a tax cut. Because that guy in the Ferrari doesn't need another break. But Kamala Harris knows you sure could use one. Paid for by FFPAC, FFPAC.org. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. This podcast is brought to you by Team Trait, a digital solution that helps you hire, optimize, and retain employees. Using psychometric assessments to identify more than 100 professional mindset traits, it gives instant reports you can use to build high-performing teams. Get two free profiles today, no commitment, no credit card required, at teamtrait.com. Team, T-R-A-I-T dot com. Welcome to the Manage Smarter Podcast with hosts C. Lee Smith and Audrey Strong. We're glad you're here for discussions on new ways to manage smarter, hire, develop, and retain talent, improve results, and propel team performance to new heights. This is the Manage Smarter Podcast. On this show, we have talked about honesty and being an honest broker as manager. But one thing that we haven't really talked about that seems a little bit more nuanced and difficult is transparency, both down the chain of command and up. Lee, what do you think? Transparency is something that, that's very important, but sometimes it is difficult to, t- to dial it in and get just the right balance between, you know, uh, sharing enough and which most people don't do and some people overcompensate and share too much and so that's one of the challenges but there are several and i can't wait to dive into it today we have an awesome guest today everyone welcome to manage smarter we're so happy you're here i'm audrey strong i'm the senior vice president of communications here at sales fuel and i'm Celie smith i'm the ceo and founder of sales fuel Okay, so the guest today, Grace Gavin, a catalyst for open and honest communication and effective leadership as co-founder of No Honesty. That's the company, but it's K-N-O-W, everyone. It's a a great company name, uh, Grace. She empowers leaders to simplify communication and eliminate organizational gaps with a diverse background from growing up on a farm, which is what I heard you say in a different interview, Grace. Super cool. To executive leadership roles, she brings a wealth of experience to her current role as co-founder and chief of staff. Passionate about inclusivity and the transformative power of openness and honesty, Grace strives to create workplaces where every individual's voice is valued. Welcome to the show, Grace. Thanks for coming. Awesome. Thank you so much for inviting me and having me here, Audrey and Lee. This is going to be a great conversation. Agreed. So um, you say honesty and transparency can solve a lot of problems. And on your website, you list this. It will reduce anxiety, ease aggression, less self-doubt, limit neurotic control, and less indecision. I kind of was wondering uh, how indecision is related to transparency. That was something Hmm. I, I said to Lee when we were prepping for the show. I'm like, I don't know how you put those two things together. I don't know. It might be a fun place to start. Yeah, absolutely. And that is because... Honesty at the root of it, as we define it, is being truly and freely yourself, speaking into what you want and how you feel. And the reason that lowers um, indecision and and reduces a lot of ambiguity and, and things like that is because we know where everybody stands. And so not only are you getting clarity on where you stand and what it is that you really want, which helps you to make decisions faster because you're not sitting in that oh, I don't know, maybe this, maybe that, not sure. You you know what you're after, you know what you want. And then when you have teams of people that know how to do that, that's where the indecision just melts away because we know what we're after, we know what we want. We're making effective decisions because of that moving faster without it feeling wildly fast. The other thing too is like when you have blanks, you know, when, when, and you're leaving it to people to fill in the blanks, mm-hmm. you have some people then that don't know how to assume positive intent. So what happens is they fill in the blanks with things that are either negative or so off base or whatever that that that's not possibly what the other person intended. And then you ha- now you've introduced bad data into the equation. So you get garbage in, garbage out. Does that is that sound about right? Yeah, absolutely. We tend to, as human beings, color things that we don't know or the gaps with our own assumptions and, and and stories that we've gone through before. And so where that comes in on the other side of communication is openness. And that's listening without reservation, putting your needs and wants on pause for someone else. So when you can really listen to somebody and when you don't fully understand there's a gap there, rather than making that assumption, 
asking another question, being really open to what it is that they have to say, that helps clear up those gaps too. Before we get too far down the road, it's like, you, know, you, you mentioned story. I want to ask about your personal story. Was there an event or something that, that, that happened you know, in your story then that led you on this journey toward championing then open, honest communication, transparency, and everything like that? What happened? Oh, goodness. I mean, we could go way, way back. I have the youngest <laughs> of eight kids. So when you talk about communication, there was a lot going on in my house, but a lot of miscommunication as well. And then as I moved into the professional world, I was actually working at a daycare for a number of years and loved it, but saw some gaps that were happening from my perspective within the organization. Reached out to the CEO, said, hey, this is what I'm seeing. This is where the gaps are for people. This is why people are leaving and why we're not getting great people in. And that's really important, especially as you're caring for young minds and developing them. Had a conversation. That conversation didn't go too well. Ended up leaving. And then to the point in my story that is really the the catalyst and the change maker is when I was 22 years old, my dad was diagnosed with cancer and we we knew his odds of survival were 3% or less. And we really struggled to, to name that and to be honest about it. And it affected the last five months that we had with him, at least in my perspective, because I was unwilling to be honest with myself about that and be honest about that with in our family structure too. And by avoiding it, I lost so much time and, and so many stories. When you talk about entrepreneurship and looking for mentors and things like that, my dad grew a dairy farm and that's entrepreneurship right there. And so that to me, watching that happen made it so wildly clear that we have one life to live. And if we are not doing it, speaking honestly, being open to others, I don't think it's the best use of our time or this life that we have. And so that's what I want for people. I want them to get what they really want out of life, which is deep connections, deep relationships, moving effectively forward together. How do you get um, staff members who don't see it as a two-way street? You as a leader need to be transparent with me, but I'm not going to be transparent with you. Or I don't know how to, or I don't know what you want. Or I don't feel means. safe in doing that. You have that issue too. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. How do you all make the, it a two-way street so you get that closeness? Yeah, it's the the trust all the way around. And we start with training leadership first. Oh, okay. How to be open and honest because, because then we go further down the organization. We train the managers, the next level down, the next level down. And they they want to trust. They want to have these conversations. They want to push the organization and have it be better. But they, there is that fear of talking to somebody higher up the chain because of things like power dynamics. And so we start with leadership training leadership first and saying, hey, if you really want your people to be engaged, if you really want them to be honest with you about what they're seeing and how they think the process can be better, if that's what you really want, then you as a leader have to be open. You have to work on more openness because that's how you're building trust with people. In, in positions of leadership, we're already getting a lot of honesty from them. We already are hearing from them. They're setting the vision, all of these things. But what their people need to know is that they're open to what they have to say. They are open to hearing what their employees have to say. If, if you're not listening well, I mean, how can you really be a good leader? Where, how should a leader set proper expectations about how much transparency they sh the employees should expect? Mm, that is always a... That's tough because it depends on the organization and, and it depends on the level of transparency they've had before. So you don't want a knee-jerk reaction if you've never shared anything about, let's say, company finances. If you've never shared the P&L or anything like that, you don't want to go from that to then sharing everything and just throwing it all out there and saying, hey, look, this is how we're doing this quarter. Because that's going to lead to a lot of confusion and you have to kind of baby step people into it and to have that transparency. And then also being very clear that there's, there's two modes of our lives, right? We have our work life and we have our personal life. And so knowing that they enmesh a little bit, but they are different. Work is where we're there to perform and to understand that. And so what do you need to tell me? What do I need to know about what's happening in your life overall to help you be the most successful here? And then the, taking the employee, letting them take that where it may. That was going to be my next question is the yeah. sex, religion, politics, third rail of topics. Uh -huh. um, what's your thought on that gray area? And then are there any 
topics of transparency that you should never just I'm as an audience member, they're saying, well, is there anything that I should never, ever share under any circumstances? I hate to say it again, but I think it depends on the relationship and understanding, Mm -hmm. you know, the caveats here are your HR policies and whatever your legal policies are. If I, if you sign an NDA, I'm not going to tell you to go against that NDA and speak about whatever it is that you said that you would not, because that's a promise that you made. Then you have your very clear HR policies. They're there to help protect the people in an organization when there's not that safety and that trust there. So they're there for good Mm -hmm. reason. But, but outside of that, it's about developing the relationship about being open and honest from the start and then continuing that through to build that trust. And so you might have people in your organization that you you talk about the the politics, religion, all those things, because the two of you have such a strong foundation of being open and honest that, Audrey, you can have your opinion. You say whatever it is that you want to say. So and long she as does. You're... <laughs> okay, good, good. Um, and I can trust that, that you're going to say what it is that you're thinking. You trust that I'm going to hear it and understand it. And then mm-hmm. I have to, I get my opinion back and we don't have to agree. I think that's a big, big myth out there that we have to agree and we have to see the things the same way. We're very conflict avoidant these days and Mm -hmm. we're always going to have conflict. You're always going to see something different than me and not even in the big topics, but if we're talking about how do we tackle a project, how do we deal with this customer who's kind of being a jerk, we're going to see it differently. We're going to come at at it from different perspectives, but it's about how do we collaborate? How do I respect what you have to say? You respect what I have to say. Being open to each other is really what that is. And then moving forward with the best solution. So how do you move forward then with someone who is not capable of that? Or or to paraphrase a movie, someone who wants the truth but can't handle the truth. Oh uh, that that's tough. And it's it's about staying in the conversation. And a lot of times emotions will get heated and that's where it comes out of not being a productive conversation anymore. And now we're just kind of shouting at each other past, but if you can come back to and level set the conversation back down to a level of, of lower emotions and just understand, Hey, we, we don't have to agree. You can see things differently. We can still work together. That's where the magic happens. That's, I mean, that's what we want, right? We want to be able to work with people regardless of how we see things differently. And if the person just won't or is unwilling to, I would say they need to work on their openness first. Uh, But then understanding, now you have more information on that relationship. Now you know where that person stands at least. And that's where you're getting more clarity and not so the indecisiveness that we were talking about before. Because now at least I know where you stand and I've got more information. And that'll help me move forward quicker rather than wondering, is that what he thinks? Is that what he thinks? Maybe he meant this by that or not. At least, you know. Right. So if I'm in the audience and I'm I'm like loving your jam and I'm like, okay, <laughs> what do I need to learn? What are the skills that I need to learn? I think I have good soft skills. So what do I need to learn to be a masterful communicator? Tell me. Yeah, it's a lot of, it's a lot of being in communication with others and to understand that we're going to be in community and conversations with people all the time. So even if your skills are really strong, they're never, we like to say, you're never going to be a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time. There are going to be those times like Lee was talking about That's where you get true. into a conversation yeah. and somebody just doesn't see it your way or just, just can't accept the fact that you see it differently. So the skills are always going to be challenged. It's about just our whole goal is making it as simple as possible. Just returning to, am I being open right now? Am I being honest right now? Those two things and not overcomplicating it. So you make people do, a, a, do you have an example for us of like a simple transparency exercise that we could yeah, try? One of the, yeah. Well, I, I got a couple for you. So the first one is what we call the agreement. And that is our, it's a simple proven script. You start any conversation with And it's quite simply saying, will you agree with me on how we're going to communicate? I want you to be 100% honest, meaning be truly and freely yourself, speaking into what you want and how you feel. And I promise that I will be 100% open to it. I will listen without reservation. I will put my needs and wants on pause for you. And in return, I will be honest with you. And I ask that you be completely open to it. 
Start any conversation like that, Audrey, and I promise you it will be better for it. In just that, what, 10 seconds it took me to say that? Right. Yeah. So that's that's one. That's called the agreement. I use that all the time with my with my clients, with my team members, with our vendors. It's I love it. Um, and then the second one is what we call fake you. And so fake you is the facade we project rather than being 100% honest. So when we talk about what's blocking us from being honest and what can we continue to work on, considering where in your life are you fake you? Is it the conversation that you have with that one team member that you just kind of nod and agree with because you don't want to get into the conflict? That's a version of being fake. Is it when you are blowing off off the handle because you've bottled in your your feelings on this particular topic and you can't hold it back anymore. And you're not somebody who usually flies off the handle, but that's another version of fake you. And it shows up in so many different ways for people. But where are the places where you're projecting that facade rather than speaking into what you want and how you feel? And then finally, the third one is on the other side, on the openness side, is called the wall. And that is the divide we create between ourselves and others rather than being 100% honest. So if you want to think about it visually, imagine a brick wall and I just throw it up in between you and I. What happens to our to our communication? Mm-hmm. It's effectively done. And we're doing that all the time to people, whether we disagree with them, we think they're kind of weird or they've said something that makes us angry. Or maybe there's there's a part of us that we're trying to protect and there's some fear going on. All of that's not serving us. And we have to understand, where do I put up the wall to the individuals in my life? For me personally, it happens when uh, my business partner will bring a new idea to me and I'm I'm deep in the middle of a, a project and I'm like, nope, no new ideas. Can't hear that. I am not open to it because, because I see the new ideas, 12 other steps of things that we got to go to. And that's not what he's saying at all. And so I need to lower that wall back down and just hear, okay, yes, this is a new idea. Most of them are actually fantastic if I take the time to sit there and listen and understand. And then and then I can move forward much more effectively of like, yes, great idea. Let's put it here and we'll come back to it in a week. Mm-hmm. I, I want to go back to something you, you said about the person then that that uh, flies off the handle or just, you know, just can't take it anymore. And so they just, you know, they, they blow up and like that. I would argue that that's not fake. I would argue that what's fake is bottling those emotions and put, tamping those down and not actually expressing how you feel in the moment is actually the fake you. What would you say to that? I would say that you're absolutely right. And it's both because both are on the extreme. So if you're bottling it up and you're not saying anything, you're not sharing, that is being fake. Yes, absolutely. But then getting to the point where the the lid pops off and you're you're blowing off proverbially and very angry, that's also not you when you're centered and focused and really speaking to what you want. So imagine you say, like you yell, I hate you at somebody, but you don't really hate them, do you? That's also being fake because what's happening is is it's exploding in the moment and not a true reflection of how how we actually feel. So both fair. ways are. Yeah, that's fair. I would, you know, and you use the term openness and honesty, you know, in conjunction with each other. You put the word and in the middle. And I, I noticed that you, you do a lot of assessments of people. Uh, you know, you have one on your website. I encourage people to go there and try it out. But I noticed that there is a significant difference between the people then who turn out to be high in openness and people that are high in honesty. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, it's why I love that you called that out because it's wildly important to recognize that they are two different things. So typically when we say open and honest, that's where we mean transparency, being honest, and we skip the entire openness side of things. But if you're imbalanced in those people who are high honesty, have high levels of honesty, but don't pair it with high levels of openness, we tend to experience those people as being aggressive, defensive. They're kind of the loud mouth, steal all the attention type people there's probably a face that's popping up in your brain right now of that person. And so when it's imbalanced. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Audrey. Thanks, Audrey. Thanks, Audrey. Thanks, Audrey. No, not, not you, Lee. Thanks, Audrey. This is a long career. Anyway, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But yes, no, it's good. And absolutely. so when, it, when it's not balanced and it's skewing towards high open, high honesty, not great for people. But on the same time, when it's skewing the other way and you've got a really effective skill of being open, but you're not honest, that's when we tend to experience people as being 
uh, passive, stagnant, indecisive, insecure. And that's not to say that those people are those things, but that's how they're being experienced because there's not that honesty coming in as well, where they're sharing where they're at. They're just taking it all in, taking it all in. And the world needs more openness, but we need your honesty alongside it. They got to come together. They're two halves of communication. I have my last question, then Lee will take the last question. Um, I've worked for large global Fortune 500 companies where none of what you champion is present. It's just a dog eat dog. I'd step over your dead grandmother to get ahead kind of a culture. When you're interviewing around for jobs, uh, what are the questions you should be asking the interviewer um, to to probe about these things? And if it really is a culture, because I mean, th- some, some companies, they're just never going to do this stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and if yeah. it's important to you, you don't want to go somewhere where there's none of this. Yeah, absolutely. It it is more difficult in larger corporate settings. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, smaller companies might of, be better than. Yeah, potentially. Mm-hmm. But the the question is that I would ask is how how will my ideas come to fruition? How will I be able to to help improve the company? And what that's really asking is where are the places where I can be honest to bring what I'm seeing, the struggles and the opportunities that we have, and if they have a a clear understanding of that and also asking, hey, what kind of training are you doing for your people? Because I, I don't, whether you work with us or you work with another organization across any any corporate, large organization, small organization, we need to continually be developing our people. And what that will tell you is if they have a growth-minded culture, because that's what all of this is, right? I have to be able mm-hmm. to be open to you to learn something different, to be able to grow. And if there's a culture of that, then then chances are much better than those that don't have anything like that. Lee, last I'm, question. I'm curious about your thoughts on uh, how you feel AI will impact transparency and honest and open communication. I mean, for starters, one of the things that we always do is that when we use AI or whatever, we always are very transparent about and say, yes, that this was aided by AI. Mostly we do it to protect ourselves because AI makes mistakes and makes stuff up occasionally. And, you know, so we don't, we want to make sure that we're transparent about that. But also then it's like, I I know some people that that when they use it, it's like it results in communication that is safe and sterile and is not really honest, truly honest. And it's not, doesn't feel real. Uh, what's your take on it? I think you're absolutely right in in being safe. And to me, that's a real shame and that's a real miss because if we don't step into the discomfort, if we don't step into the danger a little bit with other human beings and have conversations that make us a little bit nervous, like if I'm asking somebody to be honest with me, I don't know what they're going to say. And to, to be open to that is, is a big ask. And I think I'm concerned about how AI will lessen our ability to to be in person with each other and be fully present with people. But that's not just AI. That's technology in general. That's my concern because I always say if you can get face to face with somebody and have a conversation, that's the best. You know, then you move to a phone call, then you move to email and I don't know, text and all the other stuff after that. But my concern with AI is that it's kind of jumping over the human connection point and to me, that's a real miss because connection is the bedrock of everything. Communication right there. That's how we, that's how we connect as, as human beings is that communication. And if we're missing that and outsourcing it to AI, hmm. I, I'm concerned about that. Well, it's all fascinating. Um, it's been great talking with you. Grace dash Gavin is your LinkedIn. No honesty on Facebook and no honesty.com is the website. Grace, thank you so much. And how do you want people to reach out to you? What's your preferred method? Oh, website? Thank you so much. This was an awesome conversation. Best way to connect with me is on LinkedIn. And then okay. if, you, if people want to get the numbers on where they currently stand with open and honest communication, like Lee mentioned, our assessment on our website is free to take. And that's no honesty.com backslash assessment. Again, K N O W, a little play on words there. Sounds good. Thanks for being on the show. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and recommend on iTunes, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also get more great information at salesfuel.com.
This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.